This is a short video about uh, product metrics. So what I need to do is remind you maybe of what is a product space. And so you've got to set X. And let me do this by example, just for simplicity. Let's say X1 is our first set, it's capital X. And let's say that's just a copy of the real numbers. And let's say that uh, I put a metric on it, let's call it D1. And let's say that the uh, metric or the distance between two real numbers is the usual one. So absolute value of X minus Y. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell you about another copy of the real numbers. And uh, let's say I measure this copy of the real numbers, distances between two points. Sorry, I measure distances between two real numbers this way with the uh, discrete metric. So to remind you that, it's one anytime X is not equal to Y and it's zero if uh, X is equal to Y. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take these two sets here and we're gonna form the product set or a product space between the two. And so just to remind you what that is, we might just call it X. To introduce some notation, maybe you've seen before, maybe you haven't, we use a capital letter pi to denote when we're going to uh, take the product of things. So in my case, it's kind of silly. I equals one to two of x sub i. If I was to um, write out what that meant again, I'm just gonna take x1 cross x2. And uh, this is called the Cartesian product. So to remind you, what is this set? How can I describe its elements? It's the uh, all ordered pairs of the form, let's say um, x1 comma, uh, x2, where in this case, x1 lives in big X1, and the second component, little x2, lives in big X2. So I can write that down. x1's in big X1, x2 in big X2. So I'm looking just at all ordered pairs of this way. So what we want to do then is, okay, given this product space now of these two sets here, how can I measure distances there? And so there are three kind of common ones to do, and uh, I'm gonna show you three of them with these two in mind. So how do these metrics on the individual components, what can I do with those to talk about a metric on the product itself? Um, by the way, again, this capital pi, you're probably used to writing like the sigma for a summation. You can think of pi as the same kind of operator, but for multiplication. So what are some product metrics then? I'm gonna tell you about three of them. Again, these aren't the only three necessarily that you could do, but uh, these are three, again, maybe common ones. And so the first one, we'll call it D. And let's say, maybe let me fix some notation here too. Let me say that uh, x is little x here, is the point x1, x2, and y is the point y1, y2. And let's say that these are from the product space big X1 cross big X2. And in my example here, I'm just using the real numbers as each component. Again, these can be any sets in general. You can always take a Cartesian product of. Okay. So now let me get into what are the three pretty common metrics that you could have on there. So one of them looks a lot like maybe the uh, regular Euclidean metric on like a two dimensional space. So I'll call that D and I'll say that DXY, what it's gonna be, it's gonna be the sum from say I equals one to two in my case, since there's just two things of DI, XIYI. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna square that and we're gonna take the square root of that sum. So it looks an awful lot like the usual Euclidean metric. And so maybe to give you an example, uh, let's say, or let me write out actually what that is. So with a little bit less notation or maybe what we're more used to, I'm just saying that we're gonna do D1 of X1, Y1, that quantity squared plus D2 of uh, X2, Y2, that quantity squared. So to give you an example here, let's say that uh, you know X is equal to one, one half and Y is equal to one half two say, then in this case, dxy would look like the square root of, well, d1 of uh, one, one half, that thing squared, plus d2 of one half two, that thing squared. And so uh, what is that then? Remember in my example, d1, I told you that that was just the usual Euclidean metric. So in other words, absolute value of the difference of the two numbers. And while I'm up here, d2 is still gonna be just the, uh, uh, discrete metric, so just fix for this example. So in this case, this will just be one minus a half, that thing quantity squared, plus, um, in this case, uh, since these two for D2, since they're not equal, that'll just be one squared. Since the inputs are not equal, remember the discrete metric just says they're one unit apart. And so what we ought to get there is uh, one half quantity squared plus one, and so, boy, I gotta add some fractions. So I think that's one fourth plus one. I'm thinking that's square root of five fourths, or in other words, uh, root five over two. Either way, so that's how I would measure the distance between these two points, 
with this particular metric. The next one I'm going to tell you about, we'll call it D prime. And so the next one, say D prime. So how, oh, it's another way to talk about the distance between two points from the product space. What we'll just do is we'll just take the maximum of the individual uh, distances among on each component. And so max D I X I Y I, where um, you know, I equals in my case, one and two. Again, there's nothing special about having two components in your product. You could have a hundred things and you're just gonna have uh, same thing up here too. You could sum over a hundred such things. We could have a product with a hundred such sets instead of just two sets here. Anyway, I hope that you see how this could generalize perhaps. And uh, so how would I do maybe a specific example with this or what would be a good one? I'll try to just do the same one. That sounds good. So how about D prime of, I think I had something like one, one half, and uh, I think I had one half two, if I remember correctly. So this should just be, you know, the maximum of the following two numbers. So D1 of uh, X1, Y1, which is one, one half, or D2, which is, uh, uh, I'm using one half and two now. So whatever's bigger of these two. So let's actually compute these. Again, same D1, same D2 as before. D1, just take the absolute value of the difference. So that's a half. So I want the maximum of either one half or, and the same thing here, that would just be one. And so in that case then, we're saying that uh, the distance between these two points, we will just call it one, according to the metric D prime. Uh, the last metric that I'll tell you about that is possible, another possible metric, I guess I mean to say, that we could put on a, a product space, we'll call it D double prime. And uh, what it'll be, so D double prime of XY, what we'll do is we will just sum the uh, individual distances on each component. So from I equals one to two. And again, if you had like, you know, three components in your product, you'd have a three there and you'd have three things you're adding together. So to give you an example here, uh, same kind of thing, D double prime of, uh, let's do my same numbers, one, one half, comma, uh, one half, two. And what would this be? So this should just be equal to D one of one, one half plus D2 of one half two. And if I do these same idea as before, D1 remember is just absolute value of the difference, just as it has been in the past three examples, plus D2 is just the uh, discrete one. So it would just be one since these two inputs are different. And so what do I get here? I think that I get one half plus one is three halves for that distance. So again, D D prime and D double prime are three different possible metrics that you could have on the product. There are plenty of other ones that you could put on a product space as well. But it's just, if you've got a product space and each component has its own metric, say, how can we make a metric on the product? And again, these are just three examples of how to do that.